Good morning. I am Luis Yerena, Jr., Senior Pastor of Creekside Church. We're so glad you have chosen to join us in worship this morning. We hope that you will visit us when circumstances allow. Let us pray. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to us in a mighty way through your word today. We pray that our hearts would be touched and our lives would be changed as a result of hearing your word today. Encourage our faith, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's message is entitled, The Raising of Jairus' Daughter and the Healing of the Woman with an Issue, Luke 8, 40-56. How many of us have been in a desperate circumstance when all seems lost and we are seeking for an answer, but none seems available? And we are looking for God to help us. This is a passage of scripture that teaches us that when we ask for God's help in faith, he doesn't always respond according to our timetable, and he knows the outcome, so he's not worried, whereas we are worried sick. Let's look at a tremendous miracle that seems to be delayed by yet another miracle, but in reality, both are according to God's timing and his purpose, not ours. Let's look at Luke 8, 40 through 56. And as Jesus returned, the people welcomed him, for they had all been waiting for him. And there came a man named Jairus, and he was an official of the synagogue. And he fell at Jesus' feet and began to implore him to come to his house. For he had only one daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the crowds were pressing against him. And a woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years and could not be healed by anyone came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. And immediately her hemorrhage stopped. And Jesus said, Who is the one who touched me? And while they were all denying it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing in on you. But Jesus said, Someone did touch me, for I was aware that the power had gone out of me. When the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, she came trembling and fell down before him and declared in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone came from the house of the synagogue official saying, Your daughter has died. Do not trouble the teacher anymore. But when Jesus heard this, he answered him, Do not be afraid any longer. Only believe, and she will be made well. When he came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him except Peter, John, and James, and the girl's father and mother. Now they were all weeping and lamenting for her. But he said, Stop weeping, for she has not died, but is asleep. And they began laughing at him, knowing that she had died. However, he took her hand and called out, saying, Child, arise. And her spirit returned, and she got up immediately, and he gave orders for something to be given to her. Her parents were amazed. But he instructed them to tell no one what had happened. Wow, a double miracle. So we have the leader of a synagogue who has an only child, a 12-year-old daughter who is deathly ill. And he comes to Jesus, falls down at his feet, and begs him to come to his house to help his daughter. Jesus agrees to go, and on the way to his house... The crowds are literally pressing up against him. A woman who has been hemorrhaging for years with no relief touches his cloak from behind and is healed. Jesus feels the energy going through him into her and stops and asks who touched him. She comes and confesses that it was her and he talks with her. He tells her, your faith has made you well which is yet another miracle. Helping this other lady took precious additional time as the little girl was suffering. But then, someone from the synagogue leader's home comes with the news 
of the daughter's death and tells him there's no need to bother the teacher anymore. Clearly, this messenger was not someone who believed that Jesus could help. Jesus then arrives at the house. It was customary that mourners would show up at someone's home who had just had a death to mourn. It would have been loud and uncomfortable for the parents. Many times they were paid to mourn. So Jesus then takes in with him only James, John, Peter, and the parents of the little girl into her room. And he goes over to the little girl's bedside and says, Child, arise. The little girl gets up and Jesus instructs them to get her some food. Notice also that Dr. Luke describes in verse 55, And her spirit returned. And she got up immediately and he gave orders for someone, something to be given to her to eat. So where had her spirit gone in order for it to have to return? A great reminder of how our spirit leaves our bodies at death and all that's left is a dead body. We are no longer in the bodies that are dead. For believers to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So Jesus called her back from the other side, if you will, to bring her back to her parents. So we see the faith of the father, the synagogue leader, Jairus, and the power of Jesus once again, proving he is God. And we see how the faith of the father moves Jesus, even though they are surrounded by unbelievers. Remember in verse 53, and they began laughing at him, knowing that she was dead. The mourners obviously did not believe We also see the faith of a suffering woman who believed if she could just touch the cloak of Jesus, she would be healed of her long-suffering, hemorrhaging condition. And Jesus honors her faith and heals her. This is a great picture of the contrasting ways that people respond to Jesus. Some Some believed and others did not. And those who believed were not embarrassed to come to the feet of Jesus. It would have been a very humiliating thing for the head of the synagogue, Jairus, to come and beg at Jesus' feet for his help for his daughter in public. But he was not concerned. Just imagine the parents wondering why Jesus was still coming. He was too late. Perhaps if he had not stopped to heal the other lady who touched him, I would have imagined that they had lost hope once the parents heard that their little girl had died. Then the father arrives home with Jesus, his disciples, and calls them into the room after clearing out the mourners. Then in their home, at their daughter's bedside, they witness the Son of God call their daughter back from the dead. And the first face she sees is the face of the Son of God. How many of us have been in a desperate circumstance when all seems lost and we are seeking for an answer, but none seems available? In both of these miracles, we see the leader of the synagogue and the lady both fall at the feet of Jesus with their desperate circumstances, begging for healing. In both miracles, those requesting Jesus to help them humble themselves before Jesus, thus acknowledging him for who he was. They were expressing their faith in Jesus in doing so. And Jesus honored their faith and healed them. The woman was impatient, though, and just reached out to him instead of beseeching him first. And the father, I believe, was very disappointed at first when he thought all was lost, only to be shocked to witness Jesus bringing his daughter back from the dead. Oh, what a tremendous scene of the power of God. Of course, we do not always know God's will, and he does not always choose to heal. He allows us to suffer, yet for a purpose. We're reminded in Romans 8.28, And we know that all things 
work for good for those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. So we can receive encouragement in knowing that God knows our suffering and he knows the outcome and he has a purpose in all that we experience. And for many of us, we won't know why tragedies occur this side of heaven. But one day, as we look into the eyes of Jesus, it will all be made clear. These two ladies, one older, one younger, suffered, yet when they connected to Jesus, their futures were changed in a very positive way. We need to consider the many things that we face each day in our own personal lives, in the lives of our family, friends, and even in our church, and realize that even though at some times things seem quite concerning, God has a purpose in it. God has an intent to glorify himself through all that he allows us to to be involved in as believers. And we can look to him in faith and confidence and know that we are never alone in those circumstances and that in fact, we are involved in a great and mighty plan that God has for each of us as we follow him. Let us pray. Father, we wanna come to you in the name of Jesus, praying that you would instill this truth into our heart, that you remind us of the truth in these two miracles, the faith of the father of the little girl and the faith of the woman who had been suffering for years. Two different stories, but a common need, a common need for the power and presence of Jesus to work a mighty work in their life. Father, we pray that you would help us understand that we need the power and presence of Jesus in our lives, that he might work a mighty work in our lives as well. Father, as the rest of us pray, I want to speak to those who are listening, who perhaps are thinking, what is this about knowing Jesus? If you have never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, and do not know Jesus in a personal way, then you need to listen very closely. Sometime before the end of your life, you need to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Sometime before you die, you need to pray a prayer, something like this in your own words. God, I know that I'm a sinner, and I know now that you sent your son Jesus to live a perfect life, to die in the cross of Calvary for my sins and to raise from the dead on the third day to show his power over death. Father, I by faith now accept Jesus and what he did for me and accept him as my Lord and Savior and ask that you would save me. If that's the first time you prayed a prayer like that in your own words, then you just became a Christian. And we're so excited for you. Your life will be changed in a tremendous way as you follow Christ. And please be sure to listen each week as you will grow in your faith. For the rest of us, we want to thank God for the way that the Holy Spirit has spoken to us today to remind us of faith and how important our faith is, and how important it is for us to be humbled as we believe in faith at the feet of Jesus, not concerned with what others would think, but only with coming to him with our needs and realizing that he will not only listen, but he will respond. And whatever his response is, it will be his will, and it will be what we should be receiving. Thank you, Father, for the way you spoke to us through your Holy Spirit today. Thank you for the life of Jesus and what he's done for us. We are grateful 
And we pray these things in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. I want to thank you for worshiping with us today. We're so glad you were able to join with us this morning. I hope this message has been an encouragement to your faith. I hope that whatever you're going through right now, that you won't be overwhelmed by that circumstance, but instead that you will seek God, that he then can provide for you the answers to the great questions you're facing. Remember, as we saw in this example, we need to fall at the feet of Jesus and believe in faith that he can help us, and he will. I hope this is a strong message for you as you encounter many difficult things this week as we continue to live for Christ. We hope to have you join us again next week and be able to visit us at Creekside Church when we're able to receive you in our building. God bless you, and may God protect and guide you this week. Thank you. I want to walk with you, Jesus. Feel your presence and know you're near. I want to see you, Jesus, move in power and cast out fear. I need to hear you now. I need to know it's you. I'm standing on your promises. I know your word is true. You're bigger than what I see. It's you in exchange for me. Even the impossible can be reality. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe. I want to say what you're saying, speaking life to what is dead. And I want to cling to you, Jesus Who hanging on your every breath I need to hear you now I need to know it's you I'm standing on your promises I know your words are true You're bigger than what I see And it's you in exchange for me is your reality Jesus I believe Jesus I believe so let your kingdom come and let your will be I know your word is true You're bigger than what I see It's you in exchange for me It's even the impossible Is your reality I need to hear you 